Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So in this video, we will continue our learning on artificial leaf. Especially, we will talk about electrical submersible pump. Okay, so it will be only a brief video. And I'm going to talk about pressure profile in a well with electrical submersible pump. Okay, so as you can see, we have a pressure plot here. We have on the vertical axis, the depth. And we have two horizontal axes. The first one, the bottom one, is subsurface pressure or the downhole pressure. And at the top side, we have surface pressure. All right, depth, surface pressure, and subsurface or downhole pressure. All right. And as you can see, we have five points here one, two, three, four, five, five points which are actually five important pressure points. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so let's reveal those points. The first one is actually reservoir pressure. Okay, so always we start from the bottom hole pressure or static bottom hole pressure, which is average reservoir pressure. All right, so this one is the average reservoir pressure. And the second important pressure point is the bottom hole flowing pressure or PWF, all right? Bottom hole flowing pressure. And the difference between the reservoir pressure or the average reservoir pressure and the bottom hole flowing pressure of this well is called drawdown, all right? And of course, the drawdown will dictate or will influence the flow rate. As you increase the drawdown, the flow rate will increase as well. All right, so it's important. Reservoir pressure or average reservoir pressure and bottom hole flowing pressure. And here we have pump intake pressure. So the bottom hole flowing pressure, we start from here. And the difference in elevation from these two points, all right, so the fluid flow will go up from the bottom hole from the perforation side, it will go up and it will arrive at the pump level or pump intake level. And of course, from here to there, there will be pressure difference. There will be pressure drop. That's why you can see that the pump intake pressure is of course lower than the bottom hole flowing pressure. All right, so here we have bottom hole flowing pressure at the bottom depth or at the perforation side at the bottom hole and the fluid flow will go up and it reaches the pump, the pump intake. And we call the pressure at pump intake, the PIP or pump intake pressure, which is lower than the bottom hole flowing pressure. All right, that's easy. And as you can see here, we meet the ESP, the pump, the electrical submersible pump. And you understand what the pump does, it increases the pressure, right? So that's why we move from here, from pump intake pressure, we move to there, pump discharge pressure, which can be higher than the reservoir pressure. All right, so the pump will pressurize the fluid so that it will have higher, significantly higher pressure. So we increase the pressure from pump intake pressure to pump discharge pressure because of the works of this pump, all right? Okay, so far so good. And from pump discharge pressure, we will go up and finally we will be at the wellhead flowing pressure which is of course lower than the pump discharge pressure because of pressure drop, because of the elevation difference and so on and so forth, all right? So of course, the wellhead flowing pressure will be lower than the pump discharge pressure, which will allow the fluid flow to occur, all right? So of course, the fluid can only flow if the wellhead flowing pressure is lower than the pump discharge pressure. All right, so these are the five important pressure points when you analyze the pressure profile of electrical submersible pump. And lastly, we can see 
we have gradient here, pressure gradient at this location. All right. At the interval between the bottom hole or the perforation and the pump intake. And also here, the interval between the pump discharge and the well head. Okay, so here we have tubing. All right, here we have casing. But what is important here is that the pressure gradient at this interval and at that interval can be the same. But sometimes or in many cases due to fluid dynamics, due to fluid mechanics, due to change in liquid hold up, the gas hold up, right? There will be difference in the pressure gradient but it will not be that significant. So we can still conceptualize the pressure gradient to be like this way, all right? So in this case, I show you the case where I have the same pressure gradient at this interval with that interval, all right? But of course, the pressure gradient can be higher or can also be lower due to many factors like fluid dynamics all right so that's all i hope you enjoyed the video i hope this video is useful thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next artificially videos thank you